Interview and job search strategies at work. So I just got off the phone with a recruiter. And um, this company does um, NetApp. They do uh, work for NetApp, right? They're a third party. And um, since I I know NetApp, right? I'm not the only one that knows NetApp. But, um, you know, you get these recruiters calling you all the time, right? And they see something on your resume, right? Whatever, right? So... Um, the major struggle I have sometimes, probably you do too, I guess, right, is when I talk to a recruiter, I don't see him face to face sometimes. So I don't have that instant connection. And if they're not technical uh, or if they don't, you know, if I'm if I'm going very fast talking wise or if I don't speak their language or two of them, like, like this person spoke uh, recruiter ease, right? And I spoke techies, basically, right? And the I need to understand them. They don't have to understand me because I'm the one that needs a job, right, basically. Or that's the mindset anyway, right? You have to have. And so um, when they, when you never know what they're going to ask you, right, sometimes. Um, it, it, and I'm just using excuses, by the way, but to not be prepared, right? But um, you, you'll probably see them. So the email sent out usually works like this. Some recruiting companies will email you in just a, a vague description. I saw your resume on blah, 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 um, and it's, it's on NetApp. And they don't give you a job description, right? And then so you call them back, um, and then, you know, you talk to them or whatever, right? I think, I think they do that so that you're not – I think they do that so they can keep you um, – they can give the true answer because you haven't had time to look at the, the job description, right? So you don't – know what's on it so you can't fake the funk on uh, the interview or the initial call, actually, as it were. So what's the reason? Why am I telling you all this, right? So um, what I did was I just captured, wrote down the information. I wrote down what they're looking for, right? And, you know, after you go over these a couple, 10, 20, 30 times, right, that's that's why you want to have as many interviews as possible or talk to as many recruiters as possible to, so that you can develop your, your elevator pitch, right? And obviously mine wasn't that good today, but that's what you want to do. Just, you know, um, you know, have your elevator pitch down to where you got a piece of paper, you know, and you just like, there's points or whatever, or, uh, writ you wrote down some ideas or something you want to say to the recruiter, right? Write it down, boom, or even have your resume in front of you. Right. And the one thing I, I learned today, this is an old resume, by the way, it has something on there that I used to know, that I kind of don't know anymore, right? Um, and so, you know, I know this, the net app, but I don't know other parts of, like, um, PowerShell is what they ask, actually. I don't, I know a little bit of it, uh, but I just use the trick of, like, going to, like, uh, community.spiceworks.com, getting a script from there, and then changing it to make it my own, right? And then use it that way. Um, but I, what I'm finding uh, actually in the IT field, even more now is one has to have, um, some programming knowledge or some skill before. I know I wasn't asked those questions before, you know, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have been asked, do you know PowerShell? Well, I know NetApp, but you don't know PowerShell. Well, okay. Yeah. I don't automation software. Right. So that's just, that's just an, uh, an example of me needing the change for the marketplace. So I need to learn Python or Java or, um, PowerShell or some sort of scripting, some, some scripting, right? And I have to, I have to demonstrate that by putting up my, on my blog or somehow so they can see it, right? I need to create a YouTube video about it, right? Even if I, I have to go to like community.spiceworks.com and pull off a script, right? And then just change it and then create a video about me actually creating it, right? From scratch, and, you know, um, you can, dude, you got to use techniques, anything you can use to get the job, right? I mean, because that's going to be the hardest thing to get the job is to, you know, uh, the initial gatekeepers, if you will, right? Once you're in the job, you can just like learn, right? But, you know, uh, getting screwed, you know, it's, it's a good thing, right? Because they need to know, right? But, um, you know, if you need to just use, uh, use another method. A video, a creative video about uh, PowerShell, which I'm actually going to do. I'm going to learn it and or learn what I don't know and create a video about PowerShell 
And then like, okay, next time the recruiter calls me, oh yeah, I have a video about it. <laughs> I have a video about automation, done, there you go. Wow, awesome. So yeah, that's the, that's the thing on that. Yeah, um, so one thing I did say is, um, which is true, right? Um, you know, when you're on the job, right? You know, you're, uh, if you don't know, right? You know, within five minutes, you can't solve a problem or 10 minutes, whatever it is. Call the vendor. That's why the company has these large contracts with vendors, right? Like that. If you don't know, call the vendor and then you learn. I mean, that's how I actually learned uh, a lot. Um, what technology did I not know? And I learned it that way. Oh, yeah, NetApp, right? For example, I didn't know NetApp when I first started. And, um, you know, I would just do a couple YouTube videos. But, you know, um, there was no, like, test area to play around with NetApp and NetApp is not one of those tools you can or software you can download for free and and play around with so I had to um, if I didn't know I talked to my colleagues if they don't know I just called NetApp and uh, do a ticket with them and just figure it out right and they walked me through a couple things and I'm just taking notes and absorbing all this knowledge right that's truth be told that's how you actually become one of the better techs or better engineers, if you will, in your field is you talk to the vendors. They, they it's their product, you know, it's $4 billion or whatever they spend a billion dollars or whatever it is on their product. They have a lot more people working on a, uh, this issue than just me. And they know, oh yeah, this, this is a solution done. So don't, you know, I don't think I should rack my brain thinking out, okay, I need to spend three hours figuring this out. No, no, don't do that. The strategy is to prioritize your um your your the the break fix is this something that can wait till tomorrow is it something i need to do now you know are they going to call me um from home um you know is it if i don't take care of it will it have an adverse effect on my employment right i mean these are real things you need to think about right and so i mean just imagine um i've actually had it to where um Co-workers have actually said in the, you know, a job ago, they said, um, why are you always on, call, you know, call with the vendor? Like I usually call the vendor once a week usually or more, actually. Um, I didn't want to tell them because you guys designed it crappily. If you make, if you designed it better, we would have these problems. But I held my tongue and I just fix it as needed, right? Um, you know, because it, it's, it's broken either way. So it doesn't do me any good to tell them, hey, you should have done this because that's can't fix that. Right. So, um, you know, it just makes me a, a better tech, a better engineer when I when I get the experts online. Think, think of it this way. They've already sold you the product. Right. Now they're charging you a maintenance fee. OK, so if you don't get it fixed, no big deal. Let's say it's a, a yearly maintenance fee. You know, they're, you're going to have to wait a year um, to, you know, they're, usually what happens is their, their salespeople come around, you know, uh, before the year uh, to get you to buy more. By that time, everything's working fine. So they don't really, you know, it's not their concern that your product's down. Uh, sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. It's, it's your problem. Um, so they're there just to help you get the resolution and by you involving the vendors, a lot of times they've already seen the problem. So it's easy for them to fix. And it's just as simple as, and, you know, so it allows you also to get a rapport with the, uh, with the vendors. You know, you, you establish a rapport, you, you talk to them, you get to know them. So that way, um, in a roundabout way, they're educating you on the product. They're training you, if you will, on the product. Well, that's it for today. Uh, so appreciate everybody listening to this podcast and uh, have a great day.